Hello and welcome to another episode here on the War of the Rebellion channel. Today we are going to start a new series where we are going to explore material I covered in my book Liberty and Slavery published by Alice U Press. In the series we are going to look at a number of individuals, migrants from Austria, Hungary, Poland, Germany and Ireland and how they experienced European revolutionary events, how they came to the United States and witnessed the war of the rebellion and in a few cases also what they did after the war of the rebellion. Theodore Olshausen departed Hamburg for New York in July 1851 after the failure of the Schleswig-Holstein Revolution. He initially moved to St. Louis where he tried to integrate, learn English, which was very difficult in the vast German community of the town. He wrote books highlighting the benefit of migrating to this region. He immediately got involved into politics as well. He hated the know-nothings, these anti-immigration, anti-Catholic, anti-foreign element politicians. He also felt closely aligned to the Republican Party. As time went, he started to publish. He relocated to Devonport, Iowa and published Der Demokrat. In the pages of the paper, he bluntly presented an anti-slavery political agenda. He thought that slavery was a terrible institution. He pointed frequently to the slaveholder hypocrisy of saying, oh, these slaves are uneducatable, but we're not providing them an education either. At the same time, he questions the Democratic Party. How could it call itself democratic when it supported slavery? He thought that Kansas as it goes through the stages of conflict, was a precursor in the early stage of a civil war coming to the United States. And that this conflict in the future was one of either separation or emancipation. While engaged, he often misunderstood the United States. He sought, for example, that presidential candidate Stephen Douglas or a southern candidate were the most likely to cause the United States to rupture. Olshausen wanted an anti-slavery candidate. He liked William Henry Seward, the senator from New York, because he had a clear anti-slavery set of credentials to his benefit. But of course the Republican Party went for Lincoln. Having relocated again to St. Louis, Olshausen now publishing the Westly Post continued to oppose measures he believed anti-democratic. He opposed what he believed was an autocratic government in the Lincoln administration. He thought that secessionists were a band of guerrillas. He liked Fremont, John C. Fremont, the commander of U.S. forces in Missouri, especially once he issued his ill-fated Emancipation Proclamation. He was angry with President Lincoln 
for dismissing Fremont. And throughout the war, Olshausen is a champion of John C. Fremont. Because of his vocal anti-Lincoln attitude, the newspaper is almost shut down by Henry Halleck because of its opposition. At the same time, Olshausen uses that as an opportunity to call into question measures of censorship and attacks on civil liberties. By 1864, Olshausen works internally within the Republican Party framework to build an opposition to Lincoln. At the Cleveland Convention, they actually nominate John C. Fremont as their candidate was a radical platform. Unfortunately, this program doesn't go anywhere. And faced with a democratic decision against him, Olshausen is so upset that he's not accepting that democratic decision and decides to leave the United States for Europe. He always was a revolutionary. And he brought many of his radical views, questioning government at the time of crisis, to the United States. He did the same in Schleswig-Holstein in the 1840s. He hadn't changed much. He was a principled man. But in a revolution, sometimes you have to compromise on principles if you want your revolution to succeed. And Olshausen never fully realized that. If these brief episodes sparked your interest about the individuals covered, please consider not only subscribing and liking this channel, commenting on this episode, but also looking into purchasing my book, Liberty and Slavery, published by LSU Press.